Welcome back to Hobby Jogger Elite and welcome back to week 13, the 13th installment of the marathon build for the fall of 2023, where now from the time of recording less than four weeks, but from the time you're seeing this three weeks, I am going to be running a marathon, trying to run it as quickly as possible, trying to see if all of these steps, all of these very intentional moves over the past couple of months in terms of advancing my fitness can come to fruition and push me when it comes to that ever elusive sub three hour mark. Again, like I've said in previous weeks, I feel really good about this buildup. And we are after this week that we're gonna be covering here in this video, heading into peak week. So the taper is just around the corner. I have a couple big workouts to go and hope that the fitness that I have built up with these 17, 18 long weeks of training can really get the job done when it comes to marathon race day on November 12th. This was yet another solid week of training. I feel like ever since I experienced a little bit of an injury scare a couple weeks back when my half marathon was canceled, which I think at this point is like a blessing in disguise. Things have been smooth. I've been running pain-free, discomfort-free. I want to knock on wood here and not jinx anything. But yeah, that was definitely a, a concern, but something I feel like has been alleviated. It's something I've experienced in the past before, whether it's like a bit of Achilles pain or a bit of like post-tib pain on the lower part of my leg. I do have, I wouldn't say completely flat feet, but very, very low arches that are nearing flat, which when it gets to like high mileage, that can lead to some not as common pronation or just like collapsing inward a little bit. Honestly, running in Saucony shoes has helped a ton with that. Guide technology, that speed roll technology really helps to alleviate like just general issues that I have when it comes to like discomfort at the toe off position, whether it is like post tib issue or an Achilles issue. And I, I don't usually recommend like running through discomfort or injury. I would say the max discomfort pain I ever felt when it came to running over the past like three or four weeks, which again feels like it is in the past four now at this point, was like a three out of a 10, maybe four out of 10 at its absolute worst. And I would say this week of training finally feel like all the different strength, mobility, supplemental work I'm doing outside of running, but also the intentional moves again with surface, with footwear, all that stuff. Hopefully that continues as we move towards the race. Either way, it's been a really, really solid training block considering how hard I've pushed myself Myself, higher mileage than I've ever done and it felt good to be running that kind of mileage again this week without any real roadblocks or issues so started off Monday with a nice easy into steady run this was the day after the Chicago Marathon which you know I watched I watched a ton of people on you know YouTube and like other running platforms you know hitting their personal bests witnessed a world record witnessed a lot of awesome performances which had me really excited to get off to a good start with an 80 minute run about 11 miles average overall pace of 720 work down towards you know seven flat pace got in some strides towards the end of the run again did that in the Saucony shift three which I think is an extremely amazing daily trainer that can do anything from the slowest of slow recovery runs where it just kind of rolls you through your stride where you don't have to put a ton of effort into it up to like really smooth steady running and I really have enjoyed running in it so awesome way to start off the week followed that up with a nice early eight mile easy run on Tuesday that was just sort of the run of the mill trudging through the the darkness at five in the morning nothing too incredible to report on there and Wednesday had my workout which is this week's featured workout of the week again as we move towards the latter parts here of the marathon build of our training block definitely doing some more sharper shorter speed work so did six by a k and four by 400 unique part of this daniel's running formula with a lot of these faster workouts is having a much longer warm-up a much longer block of easy running before the workout actually starts so i think my warm-up was like five miles for this run which again just kind of feels like you're going for a full run for 
before you even start the workout to begin with, but that didn't deter me too much. Felt like the workout went pretty well despite feeling a lot of things but fast at this point in the training block, this deep into it. Those like really fast twitch, like 5K speed muscles just are not firing the way they were over the summer, but still felt like I got in some good work with that workout. So let's see here how that went. What's going on everybody? You know the deal. It is a nice crisp autumn morning, making our way through October here. Another Wednesday workout on our hands. We're starting to incorporate a bit of the shorter reps, the faster, sharper speed work into our running, into our workouts as the training block makes its way towards its conclusion. So with that as context today, we have a pretty lengthy warm-up of five miles, followed by six one kilometer repeats and four 400 meter repeats. So 10 reps in total, six of them Ks, four of them 400s in total, probably around 13 or 14 miles on the day, 20 to 22 kilometers. So got a nice beefy Wednesday workout on our hands. If you've been around long enough, you know that the beginning of my warm up, it's always underscored by my pursuit of a nearby porta potty so that is what we are running towards at this very moment once we do that we'll get this very long warm-up underway of five miles intentionally sort of fatiguing the legs a little bit more than usual to run fast on tired legs look at that we're already here good old porta potty all right, five mile warm up done here momentarily. Getting into the first kilometer rep. First three K reps done. 332, 332, and 330. So, gonna just try to stay in and around the low 330s for the last three. We have some 400s. Should've brought gloves. Hands are absolutely freezing right now. So, that is definitely a bit of a distraction, bit of a deterrent in the middle of these hard reps. But, here's what it is. I don't think I've reflected on or appreciated enough how good of sort of like anaerobic shape I was in and how good my top end speed was back when I was training for 5Ks over the summer. I was running K reps in 325 and under consistently. And now just getting 330 flat feels like an accomplishment. So yeah, definitely gonna do more speed stuff next summer to try to advance that long distance fitness. But yeah, kind of crazy to think about that. All six Ks are done. Went 331, 334, 333 on the last three. So every single rep was within four seconds of each other, which is good. Felt like I paced those pretty well. So now we turn around. Got four, four hundreds. These are all going to be uphill because this is like i said last week downhill on the out part of the out and back uphill on the back part so should be fun trying to run fast 400s uphill on a trail after running 6ks but you know we're doing great out here loving life it is so cold i should have brought my gloves my hands are absolutely freezing such a such a rookie mistake you know, one of the first really cold workouts of the year. Thought I wouldn't need gloves because all this warm weather lately, but I certainly needed them. So let's rip some 400s. Oh, boy, all four 400s. 
are done. It was like 80 seconds, so yeah, my top end speed right now is garbage. Anything under like eight or 600 meter reps right now with, if you follow like the Daniels VDOT pace prescriptions, like anything R pace or like repetition based, it just feels like a sprint. But interval pace stuff, so when I'm running like kilometer repeats at, mile repeats at, pretty much like the 540s, feels like comfortably hard for those types of reps. But as soon as I try to start dipping down towards low 530s, 520 mile pace range, dude, it just, it feels like I'm working so hard for it. So I have really like bad, stiff, immobile hips. So if you have anything to help with that, throw it down in the comments. I try to do hip mobility stuff here and there, but you know, when you work full-time nine to five job, when you're commuting, sitting at a desk, sitting in a car a lot, you're just like not giving yourself a very great chance to have super mobile hips. So I need to compensate for that somehow. So let me know how to get more mobile hips. But I'm currently at about 11 and a half miles, I'm gonna cool down to somewhere in the range of 14. So catch up there. So yeah, just over 14 miles on the day, 739 average overall pace, which doesn't really matter when it comes to a workout like that, about an hour and 48 minutes of running. And yeah, my biggest priority here was just running controlled and running consistent through each rep. And there are very like specific paces, pace ranges sort of prescribed based off your VDOT score, if you're familiar with Daniel's running formula and everything that goes with training with Daniel's. And I ran these right at or a little bit faster than those felt capable through those reps, felt like I could have done more and stayed consistent. So that's sort of a good feeling to have after a workout like that. So followed that up on Thursday with a nine and a half mile easy run average overall pace 746 and yeah felt solid enough on that run definitely started to get cooler during the workout on Wednesday and after that so a lot of colder weather running as of late and it honestly felt nicer to double later that afternoon on Thursday then with just short of four miles 30 minute double it was like 65 66 degrees out it felt like refreshing compared to how cold it has quickly gotten here in Pennsylvania. So I actually enjoyed running in a little bit of warmer weather that afternoon. And then Friday did another easy run, just about uh, an hour long run, a little shy of eight and a half miles at a 731 pace. Felt good, felt smooth on that run again in the Saucony Shift 3s. And then follow that up with a pretty big workout on Saturday for my Saturday long run. And originally I had a workout from Daniel's prescribed that I've already done in the long run, I think two or three times at this point. And I wanted to sort of change it up a little bit. So I stole this workout from Megan Featherstone of Featherstone Nutrition. Works with Believe in the Run a lot. They have an awesome podcast, Fuel for the Soul, which I listen to quite a bit. And it is a, an eight times one mile at marathon pace, one mile float at a minute slower than marathon pace. So it sort of keeps you honest on those recovery miles where you're not really recovering, you're still keeping at a steady pace. Like it's not just an easy jog recovery or a rest. You are running one mile at your marathon effort or marathon pace, following that up with a mile at again, a pretty consistent, steady, intentional pace. And the way she described it on Strava is that Megan Murray of Believe in the Run has given her this workout for three straight training blocks. She has hated it each and every time. It looks kind of intimidating on paper because it is 16 miles straight where half of those miles are at marathon pace and the other half are at like a pretty steady clip if you want to even consider it a recovery. So didn't feel super, super confident going into this one. Felt like I was going to have to struggle a little bit, dig a little bit deep. And I ended up kind of 
floating through this workout and had a relatively easy time with it relative to the paces that I was running. I can honestly say that like 6.30 pace never felt so easy on a run. A little windy, a little rainy, a little misty on this run. Lauren did not come along to accompany me on the bike this time, so it was just kind of solo out on my own running this one. And again, I felt super strong, super capable the whole entire way. I want to gradually reintroduce some super shoes like once a week at most into training these last couple weeks just to again get used to running fast in them. Maybe that had some part in my lower perceived effort. My heart rate, which I wore a strap for on this run, certainly indicated that this was like a lot lower output in terms of energy. Heart rate isn't always the most reliable metric when it comes to sort of testing how much energy you're expending. You know, things like lactate are definitely more accurate in terms of that. Hopefully that's encouraging. Hopefully that is somewhat accurate at least, where it feels like everything else was pretty accurate. I ran all the recovery or like off miles at 737-ish or faster. I was pretty much just trying to keep the marathon miles in the 630s the off miles in the 730s and yeah really really worked through this well I was still feeling like I wouldn't say fresh I wouldn't say super spry and loose by the time I hit 20 miles but this was probably the best I've ever felt at like the 20 mile mark so I decided to add on like half of an on mile at the end of this workout. So I ran 644 on mile 21 at, it says less than 150 beats per minute, which is kind of crazy for me. And yeah, the fact that I felt good enough to do that, even though I wasn't at marathon pace for every single mile of this workout, just like was very, a very big confidence boost, made me feel very strong and confident, feeling that good late into a workout and kind of stuck with the usual fueling plan. Gel every four miles, I want to transition to kind of being a little bit more time-based rather than distance-based with my fueling here, because it's gonna be, if I'm running at what I'm trying to run for this marathon, a gel every 25 to 27-ish minutes, and I wanna make sure my stomach can handle that. So this next marathon workout, I'm gonna try to fuel that often and hopefully take on. I haven't had any problems so far this training block with fueling in like GI distress, which is an absolute breath of fresh air because I always have problems with that in previous training blocks. But this was the first time I also tried Scratch Super High Carb, I think it's called. I think it used to be called Super Fuel. Now it's Super High Carb. And that felt like a little bit of a game changer. And I don't wanna completely say that I felt that good late into the run because of that. But being able to, as someone who has grown very used to having like a handheld 16 to 20 ounce bottle in their hand for the entirety of a long run or a marathon, being able to carry that many carbs in that and that much nutrition feels like as long as your stomach can handle it, a little bit of a cheat code when it comes to fueling. If you are able to get used to holding a handheld and you don't mind spending like $40 a bag, even though there's only like eight servings in it. So it's like $5 a serving pretty much according to the nutrition label. It's, it's definitely something to at least try out and consider because it recommends a full serving for, you know, 16 to 20 ounces. And in that full serving, you get around like three or 400 milligrams of sodium, but 100 grams of carbs, 400 calories like sat in my stomach really well for the first time trying it and that's definitely something i'm going to use pretty much every workout every long run from here until the race to make sure my stomach can definitely handle it because i definitely want to use that and i feel like that could be very beneficial so a great great long run workout to close out this week for hitting a 10 mile easy run on sunday and that was pretty much that so closing out week 13 at just over 86 miles around 2,000 feet of elevation gain, 10 hours, 49 minutes of running. So really great week of training, solid two workouts there. Peak week is on tap. I am just starting peak week here as we record this. I'm excited to hopefully get through this healthy, feeling good, feeling fit. One more big week before we start to taper down and cut the mileage here. So yeah, it was a great week of training. Can't complain about too much. Hopefully we can continue this momentum into the rest of October 
leading up to the marathon. So we will see you next time. Peace.